These are the Kaffir limes that I used. Uh, I used two kilos. This is about one kilo left, which is destined for some marmalade. Hello, Jim Twelves here. It's the 23rd of July, 2022. And today I'm going to talk you through my first stage process of making kaffir lime wine. And I've basically adjusted a recipe from here for several oranges. And in this book by Leverett, Brian Leverett, on page 34, there's a recipe which I've adjusted, shall I say, modified. So I'll put the description dot points in the uh, description below, the recipe if you like, but I want to talk you through it. So I've used two kilos of kaffir limes, 250 grams of sultanas, two kilos of sugar, pectic enzyme, and yeast and two litres of boiled water that's cooled down. So let me go through a few of the steps. First of all, peeling the kaffir limes. Now they weren't very big, yay big, some of them, mostly very green. And when I picked them off the tree, they had to fall into my hands more or less. I didn't tug at any of them because if I had that would have meant they weren't quite ripe and there were one or two on the ground that I had picked up and washed thoroughly. So the first job once I got them into the kitchen was to thoroughly wash the outsides and make sure that uh, everything else I was using was completely sanitized with Camden tablets and I wasn't going to run any risk of um, contamination. So I first of all was peeling the limes. Now to get the green skin off was relatively okay but to get all the white pith off was really difficult and it took a bit of getting used to with a knife to peel it off and I was pleased that it didn't affect the fruit. The fruit stayed intact inside but as a little ball, more or less spherical, wasn't oval like you would imagine for a lemon. So getting the skin and the pith off was intoxicating with the smell. And it got into my eyes and made me my nose run. I had to stop a few times and blow my nose. Uh, I had to wash my hands many times because I had a few cuts and the acid was getting into the cuts and discovering every single bit of sore skin. It was very painful. So washing in clean water was the only solution really. So yeah, let me read you what the recipe from Brian says about the pith. Peel the oranges, in this case limes, discard the skins, ensure that all the white pieces of pith are removed. Failure to do this will result in the wine having a bitter taste. So I was very keen to make sure I didn't have any pith left on the fruit. So that was done, number one. Then the pieces or the fruit were put into the into the first stage fermentation bucket and I broke them up with a piece of three by two um, timber, smashed it onto the base. Um, tell a lie, I actually chopped them probably four ways before I put them in the bin. My apologies, I forgot that. So I tried to smash them up as much as I could. Now coming to the sultanas, it says in the recipe that they should be chopped. Mm, but what does chopped mean? Did it mean in a blender? Well, I didn't use a blender. I put them on a board and chopped them up 
in the way that you would with a uh, fresh herbs. So they weren't that small, but they were certainly chopped. So their insides were accessible. So we've got the fruit chopped up in the bucket and smashed at the bottom and cut up before. We've got the sultanas cut up and put in. Then we add um, two litres of boiling water and let it stand for 30 minutes. So place the fruit segments into a bucket. Um, Add the minced sultanas, do not use raisins as the flavour tends to be overpowering. Add four point pints, sorry, four pints or two litres of boiling water, allow to stand for half an hour. And then add the sugar dissolved in, two, in one litre of water. Now that was an interesting stage in the process. So actually I had some boiled water on the oven top about a litre but it had cooled down so it wasn't boiling nowhere near and then I put the two kilos of sugar into that stirring it and I was amazed at basically that made two litres or oh, that's what it felt like the volume in the saucepan was massive and since I was using brown sugar it was a beautiful sort of treacly colour and look. Mm. So they boiled water and it stands for about 30 minutes. So obviously to come way down in temperature. Then I add the warm sugar mixture and stir really well. Mix it all in very rapidly. Now this is a lovely word. When the mixture is tepid, now I looked that up and that's about 24 degrees C. When it's tepid and my wife said if you imagine putting your elbow into a bath when you're about to bath a baby to test whether the water is too hot for the baby. You know why your elbow is good at measuring temperature I'm not actually sure but apparently it's a thing. So when the water was about 24, or so I estimated, then I had the pectic enzyme and the yeast. Now I need to tell you, I mixed the yeast with one orange juiced, the juice of one orange, no pips, and about a cup of warm water. So the juice of one orange, a cup of warm water, and a, actually I used half a sachet of wine yeast, shrug it up. And that was actually sitting for about an hour while I was peeling all the limes. And that was really effective. I think a very key step. It doesn't actually mention it in the recipe, but therefore the 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 yeast could get going and you could tell it was going it was beginning to bubble nicely and smell beautiful before I put it into the barrel with the limes and the sugar and the sultanas so here I am at stage six I'm uh, mixing with the tepid uh, concoction the pectic enzyme and the yeast I put the whole thing in the yeast which included the juice of one orange and a cup of warm water stirred it thoroughly and stuck it on top of my heat source which is a, a bulb and I've shown you that before I think and basically I've got that on a time clock so it goes on for every hour after 11 o'clock and up to 8 o'clock in the morning but it's off for 15 minutes in each of those hours so to ensure that it never gets too hot but it's kept warm when the house is obviously the, obviously at its coolest so every morning I come down 
and I've got a thermometer on top of the barrel and every morning that's been 20, 21 degrees. Now if you think that that's actually probably so far above the level of the liquid so it's measuring the temperature at the top and it's in a, all that air so the temperature of the first fermentation my guess is it's probably been about 30 no sorry 28 29 I would think that's what I've kept it at the barrel has been wrapped in a towel so I think that's what it will have been anyway so that's been on for a week and I've been beating down the head every day and this weekend the plan is to take it out of there strain all the solids that's the skins of the sultanas the fruit which is actually broken down a lot now it's more or less into minute little beads of lime and um, and the pips yes the pips all fell to the bottom actually of the mixture after one day after yeah one day so that's where they've been all this time and there were a lot of pips a lot of pips so this weekend my plan is to strain it and put it into the demijohn and start the second fermentation stage the anaerobic one as opposed to the aerobic and we'll see how we go bye for now I've kept a thermometer on top inside the towel and the temperature this morning is 21 degrees C I hope you can see in there that's the head which I'm about to punch down So here we go with the punching down. I don't know whether you can see that. But the liquid under there is This is a time clock that I'm using to make sure the light comes on uh, from about 11 to 8 in the morning going off at uh, hourly intervals for about a quarter of an hour. Hello, so today we're going to take the first fermentation out and strain it and put it into the demijohn for the second fermentation. So here goes. So I've never filmed the process of doing this before so let's see how we go at a time. So this is the keeper line and 
sultanas, the water, and the sugar. Into this bag, which I'll be well, will behave. And I think I'm going to do it, try to do it in two lots. I don't want to waste any of the juice, so I'm giving it a squeeze. The reason I'm doing that is that that's what I would do if I was uh, ending the first fermentation of cider and I had apples. So let's see if I say I'm not going to squeeze it very hard because I don't want to get too much rubbish coming through. But I think that's a decent amount of separation of solids. So See how we go there. Um, yeah, that's going to go into there. So these have all been sterilised. This jug is an absolute brilliant pourer. I wouldn't be without it. So here we go with the Hopefully, the remainder of the first ferment. Now, I was thinking of taking the specific gravity of this, but I don't think I need to because it's actually a very light liquid, which tells me the specific gravity is pretty near to one. Anyway, when I first put it in, all the sugar was almost like treacle. So that tells me it's already begun to do a great deal of fermentation and I haven't got that much now to fill in with boiled water before I put the airlock on. So, all so far so good. So, I've now got some boiled water which is down to about 33 degrees put it into this saucepan and hopefully we've now got enough to top up to about four, lit four and a half litres. That looks a good height. So in goes the bone. 
and we should now be ready for the second fermentation. So here we have the kefir lime wine in the demijohn. It seems to be about 23 degrees at the moment. I've got some cardboard strips underneath it to see if it gets too hot. And I'm going to cover it with the towel again. And um, then we'll see what happens. It looks to me as if fermentation is keeping going and hopefully it will after this shock. I don't suppose we're going to get a bubble while I'm filming but you never know. No, I don't think so. Anyway, all the best with your kefir wine brew. Bye for now.